In this quick video, we will discuss how provisioning, Active Directory Replication, and the agent's flush interval affect when changes are effective in a system. Active Directory Replication works in different ways. It depends if you're dealing with a local site or if you're dealing with a remote site. My recommendation is that you read the article that I'm referring in this video. You need to understand how Active Directory Replication works. In my case, in my environment, I have two domain controllers. So we're dealing with a single site and what is called intra-site replication. Before, in Windows 2000, intra-site replication could last as long as five minutes. But now, it's as short as 15 seconds. What that means is, when we are provisioning an account, um, we have to account for that provisioning action because it could be done with an identity management solution or with ZPA, or programmatically, but also we have to keep in mind Active Directory. So um, remember, for a person to have access to a system, they need two things, um, an identity and a role. I have two copies of Access Manager running here. One of them is connected to DC1 and one is connected to DC2. So the key here is that for you to minimize repli uh, effectiveness and replication, is that you're working with the same domain controller at the same time. So in here, if I, need to, if I want to provision Kramer, notice that I, I'm, I'm gonna use the one up top that is connected to DC1. I'm gonna go ahead and do a manual provisioning. So I'm finding Kramer. And uh, I'm gonna override his identity here. So his username is Kramer. But if I go into the second one in here and I refresh, it's gonna take a little while for me to see that change, right? So the user, um, if I'm connected to DC2, if my agent is connected to DC2, it may take a little while for, for me to be able to do that. Now let's look at the effects of the cache. You can see the list of users here. It does display Kramer, but if I do an AD query user command, I only have George and that's because the cache flush interval by default is 3600 3, 3, seconds. That's uh, basically an hour. We don't recommend that you change that because it's a, actually a good number, but you have to keep that in terms, of, in terms of SLAs. So let's pretend this is a quick fix and I do need to make sure that Cosmo is able to access the system right away. I only gave him an identity. So if I do um, an AD flush, I should be able to get him right away. But first, I need to check what domain controller he's working with and an AD info. So, okay, he's working with DC1 and, and the change already replicated to DC1, so I should be good. I'm going to do an AD flush, so it, it will be an elevated user, has been, and AD flush. I'm going to be challenged. And now, uh, when I do an AD query user, the user doesn't have access. And that's because there's something that I'm missing. I'm missing the role. And the particular role that I need to give this user is the role of a web administrator. So what I do is, okay, I could do this from Access Manager, but I'm going to go ahead and do it from my um, Active Directory user and computers. So I pick the user, I make a member off, I find uh, my, my groups, and I believe it's uh, web admins. Because this, uh, this particular role, uh, I'm connected to the same machine, all I need to do is do an AD flush. So I didn't have to wait for replication, and now I can see Kramer. And if I want to verify that that user has um, the proper uh, identity uh, or role, all I need to do is DZ do, DZ info, Kramer. And I can see, you can see that the user has a role, Unix Web Admin, and that's it. So two things, remember, two things that are needed. A user needs to have an identity and a role. And if you want to minimize um, the amount of time it takes for replication to happen uh, or within a site, 
all you need to make sure is that your consoles and your agent are pointing to the same place. So first thing I find in my agent, what domain controller it's, it's working with. Oh, it's working with DC1. I can basically switch and say, if it's in Access Manager, I can do connect to remote forest and pick the domain controller. So I'm working with the same domain controller here. And uh, with Active Directory user and computers, I can just change domain controller and pick the one that I need. At this point, I basically eliminated uh, some, some few extra uh, time that it takes uh, for inter or intra-site replication. And I hope this video helps.